morning to you all. Uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, today we're going to carry on talking in our Off the Map series about um, different characters in the Bible. Uh, off the Map in the sense of God calling people into uh, new things, uh, places they haven't been to before. And um, yeah, we're going to be carrying on with Abraham. Uh, and in particular, uh, a, a particular character in Abraham's life that he meets called uh, Melchizedek. Uh, and uh, so without further ado, let's put some context around that. Now, uh, the last time I was talking to you, we, we looked at Abraham in terms of the promise he had received from God that uh, he would become a, a great nation, uh, that God would give him a, a land to possess and to own, uh, which would become uh, the land of Israel, uh, and that through him all people would be blessed. And ultimately, uh, Jesus Christ would come from his line, and through uh, him all peoples of the earth would be blessed, ultimately through Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation that came through Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. Now, uh, we left Abraham, uh, and he had, uh, he had received that promise from God, and he'd been commended in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, uh, as a man of faith, uh, along with Sarah. And he'd obeyed God and left uh, Haran, uh, which is uh, in uh, modern day Syria. And he'd gone to Canaan, but a great famine had hit the land. And he and Sarah and his nephew Lot and all their possessions, they took to Egypt for safety. Uh, and he was fearful in Egypt that uh, because his wife was beautiful, uh, that uh, the Egyptians would see the beauty of his wife and kill him. And in his fear, he, he lied to the Egyptians and said, uh, got her to say that um, she was his uh, sister. And indeed, she was his half-sister, but it was a half-truth. And she had ended up being taken to the uh, court of Pharaoh, where she became uh, Pharaoh's wife. Uh, and uh, an awful experience for her. Um, and... Uh, God was not happy with that, and uh, we talked about how God intervened and he rescued uh, Sarah from the court of, uh, of Pharaoh, and how he uh, took uh, by putting plagues on on the house of Pharaoh. How uh, Pharaoh eventually said, "Could leave, leave." He worked out that uh, Sarah was Abraham's wife, and uh, he 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 got his men to escort them uh, out of Egypt and back into Canaan, the land that God had promised to Abraham and that's where we're going to pick the story up now when Abraham uh, returns uh, into the land of Canaan he, he wanders for a while uh, until he goes uh, north uh, back to uh, uh, Bethel where he uh, he builds an altar uh, and at that altar he, he worships God he, he, he kind of reconnects him with God and uh, he re-establishes that relationship with God which uh, you could argue had waned a bit in Egypt. And what happens is that um, uh, they go back uh, they go back south with Lot, and um, they are clearly very wealthy. Uh, they are a lot of land stock, a lot of livestock, and they have a lot of people working for them. And, and, and Lot, his nephew, uh, and he, their they're men uh, come to a disagreement because there, there's so many of them and so much livestock that they can't agree who... Who's going to have which bit of the land? So Abraham um, says to Lot, "You let let's you go. You choose which way you go. There's plenty of land for for, for all of us. And uh, if you go to the east, I'll go to the west. If you go to the north, you, I'll go the opposite way. But you go." He he gives Lot uh, the first choice of the land that he'll take, and uh, Lot looks away to the to the east. Uh, and he sees that uh, to the east in the plains of Jordan, it's fertile, as fertile as it is in Egypt, so lush. Uh, and, uh, uh, and he goes that way. Uh, and he, he goes that way to the good land, the best land, uh, seemingly. Uh, and, and in that place uh, is uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, for, uh, towns uh, infamous for their, their wickedness. Uh, and the Bible said that, uh, that Sodom sinned greatly against God. And uh, Lot finds himself uh, living uh, in that vicinity, that region, and, and settling uh, around uh, Sodom. And, um, you know, sometimes that which looks good and verdant and green and lush can be a, a risk and a danger to us. And uh, so it was to, to Lot. 
Uh, but Abraham, he he went uh, he went uh, into the, the the mountain places, and uh, he communed again with God. He built another altar to him, uh, and, and and he began to, to to settle into and wait upon God's promises for him in faith. And you notice he hadn't grabbed that which looked the best. He hadn't asserted his right. It's God that had given him the promise, not a lot. Should he not take the best bit of a land? Uh, amazing there. His faith said, no, God will God will establish what he has to bring about. So he he says, Lot, you, you make your decision. I'll I'll take what's left. And God visits him again and re-promises him and says, look to the north, the south, the east and the west and this land that I will give to you. It is your land. I will give this to you. Now, kingdoms. Uh, in this age, there were many kingdoms and many powers. Just as in our world today, there are many kingdoms and many powers. And um, they fought each other. Just as in our world, we have wars and fights about resources and territories they had wars and fights about resources and territories back then as well and uh, very often when it comes to kingdoms and kingdoms uh, you find uh, that there are vassal states uh, ones that owe their allegiance to a greater power um, uh, and uh, alliances and allies and uh, you know like in, in the cold war we had the warsaw pact and uh, we had the uh, nato well so it was in this time and there were a number of kings in the uh, in the area, uh, and um, some of the kings gathered together around around one particular king, and he was the top dog, and they they uh, uh, they, they exerted power over the over that area, uh, and the kings of uh, Sodom and Gomorrah uh, they weren't happy about this, and they they, they staged a rebellion. Uh, uh, the king of um, Sodom uh, staged a rebellion and um, it all went really really wrong for them and uh, they uh, they ended up in a terrible battle uh, uh, and ended up uh, the, 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 the soldiers ended up falling into tar pits terrible calamity for the soldiers of Sodom and Gomorrah and um, the other kings uh, rode in to Sodom and they took all the, the, the they took all the wealth and the money stripped it bare uh, and they fled back north of Damascus with their booty and their loot. But the only problem was, caught up in all this, was Lot and his wife, his kids and their livestock. And they were, they were swept up as well uh, by these kings from the north who basically kidnapped them and, and took them away. Uh, and Abraham, he learns of this. And Abraham uh, gets together a fighting force of men, not, not many of them, um, 300 odd men uh, he has uh, who've been trained in fighting. And uh, he mounts an, audish, an audacious uh, um, rescue plan. Uh, this is a formidable army that has beaten Sodom and Gomorrah. And uh, he, he, he chases them all the way north of Damascus. It's a long, a long way, almost all the way back to Haran, where he's come from. And he chases them down and he rescues his brother, Lot. Uh, and uh, he comes back, uh, he comes back. And when he, when he arrives back uh, near to uh, where, he's, where he's settled in the, in, in, in the south of Israel, out comes Melchizedek from Salem. And uh, Melchizedek is uh, a king. He is a king and he is a priest. Uh, and it says he was a priest of the Most High God. Let, let, me, let me read this to you. It's in uh, Genesis chapter 14. After his return from the defeat of Cheldama and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Shaba. That is the king's valley. So the king of Sodom, he also went out to meet him. But also, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was a priest of the Most High God. That's our God. That's the Most High God is God. I mean, God had obviously got this guy, this high priest, Melchizedek. He's where does he come from? And he blessed him and said, "Blessed be Abraham, by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth." And blessed be the God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. 
And the king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the persons, but take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted my hand to the Lord God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and I would not take a thread or a sandal strap or anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich. I will take nothing but what the young men have eaten and the share of men who went with me. So we meet Melchizedek and he has come out and he has met Abraham. And how this amazing thing happens. He, he brings out bread and he brings out wine. I mean, already, you know, there should be some little bells ringing in our mind. Who, who is this character? Who is this Melchizedek, this priest of the most high God, bringing out bread, bringing out wine? Well, it sounds like a, a foreshadowing of, of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who brings bread and who brings wine. Jesus Christ, who is a king and yet also a high priest. There are so striking parallels, uh, so striking for us uh, in this character of Melchizedek. And Abraham finds the, uh, he, 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 he says, I'm really in this for, for the God most high. My, my heart is for God. Uh, and, you know, the king of Sodom has come. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's still militarily powerful. And, um, you know, maybe Abraham remembers what happened in Egypt where he was fearful of the king uh, and where he had, in a sense, taken the riches that king had offered him. And uh, here we find uh, the converse. Here he is turning to God's high priest. Here he is turning to uh, a, a king uh, uh, who worships God. And he is taking bread and he is taking wine from this high priest and he's giving him a tenth of all he has. A way of saying, I'm, I'm with God, I'm, I'm for God. And he rejects uh, uh, the king of Sodom. Uh, he rejects the, 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 the earthly king for the heavenly king. Uh, he rejects what, uh, what man uh, and man's power structures and authorities can give him. And he, he, he says, I, I have faith and trust and I give to God most high and it's no coincidence that uh, you know it, again uh, in the book of Psalms this character Melchizedek comes up in in, in Psalm uh, 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 110 and um, it says uh, uh, Psalm 110 written by King David uh, the Lord says to my Lord sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool the Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. From the womb of mourning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations. We see here another mention of Melchizedek, and in a sense, you know, it's they're recognizing there's something about Melchizedek which is really quite special, and um, we can't help but see it, it, in this in this Psalm of David, uh, almost uh, uh, foretelling prophetic words about uh, uh, Jesus Christ. The Lord is at your right hand. Uh, uh, um, and uh, you will be a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so it's not surprising that just as Hebrews talks about Abraham as a man of faith, we find Hebrews also talking about Jesus Christ being uh, in the order of uh, Melchizedek. And this amazing Melchizedek that Abraham had met, we find that... Uh, these words here that uh, in Hebrews chapter 7 it says for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him and to him Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything 
he is first by translation of his name king of righteousness and then he is also king of salem that is king of peace he is without father or mother or genealogy having neither beginning of days nor end of life but resembling the son of god he continues a priest forever so there's something very special about this character melchizedek it's uh, it, it, very special um uh he appears in the in, in the Old Testament just out of nowhere. You know, there is no genealogy for him. There's no description of his heritage or his history. He just seems to appear there with bread and wine. Uh, some people suggest that uh, that it is Jesus Christ, uh, uh, the Word of God made incarnate there. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe that it's, he was a, he was a, he well, he was a man. He was a worshiper of the Most High God. Uh, and but there were prophetic uh, shadowings and things within that of, of what would be for the future and by blessing uh, uh, Abraham um, you know, from it, the Bible talks about that you know out of Abraham was going to come a priesthood uh, out of Abraham's uh, uh, line was going to come the Levites and we know that the Levites were established as as, as priests and they were the ones that offered sacrifice for the sins of the people. But the Bible and the Hebrews talks about the fact that because Melchizedek blessed Abraham, it's normally the greater one that blesses the lesser one. And within Abraham, Levi was already kind of there in the potentiality. They're saying that Melchizedek, the greater priest, blessed the lesser priest, Levi. And so... What they're saying is Jesus is like Melchizedek because he is superior to the Levite priesthood. He comes along and he alters, he off, Jesus Christ offers the ultimate sacrifice. He is the ultimate priest. He lays down his life, the ultimate offering and sacrifice that you and I and all people can be forgiven of their sin and reconciled to God. So Jesus is the great high priest. He's in the, a priest in the order of Melchizedek, not a priest in the order of Levi. Um, and so uh, we have this amazing picture of Jesus as a high priest in the order of uh, Melchizedek. Uh, it says um, here, um, uh, you are a priest. Once again, it quotes Psalms. It says, "For you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek." Um, uh, so, uh, and, and it says this in in in, in seven twenty two. This makes Jesus the guarantor of a better covenant. You see, what the Levites were were doing in offering sacrifice, they could only go so far in atoning for sin. Uh, Jesus Christ sacrificed atones for your sin. Uh, completely uh, and utterly and forever um and uh you know it talks about how jesus christ is is a high priest of a better covenant and so abraham has um he's gone out and he's met this guy he's met melchizedek and he is he is uh he's really gone off the map you know in, in response to uh, his faith uh, God, uh, you know, God, God has come out and uh, he sent this high priest Melchizedek to offer bread and wine. And uh, I don't know, I, I can't help but think that, that I, that's amazing. It's almost like, you know, he's taking communion before Jesus has even come. It's amazing. It, it's amazing that this idea that Abraham partaking of, of, of communion, bread and wine, um, absolutely uh, uh, amazing. And um, so the story goes on. He's he's rejected uh, the king of Sodom, uh, and the king of Sodom uh, we, is 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 rightly disgruntled. Um, you know, in, in in your life and in my life, um, it can be it can be difficult at times. It can be difficult. You know, we live in a world uh, of kings, of powers, of authorities, both physical and spiritual. And um, we can make choices about who we submit to um, spiritually. Uh, I'm thinking about now uh, primarily. Um, you know, when we choose to walk in sin, when we choose to walk in um, ways which aren't of God's ways, sometimes we can be like Abraham when he was at his weakest in Egypt and fearful. And so he... Uh, Katow to the Pharaoh, 
Or we can be like Abraham when he went to the altar. When he went to that place of worship, when he communed with God, when he walked with God, and uh, when God gave him the faith and equipped him to rescue Lot. And in that, in that moment of, of success, uh, he didn't forget who had made that possible. And when Melchizedek came out, he, he, he gave a tenth of everything to God. And so in our, in our lives, let's, let's be like Abraham. Let's, let's follow God. Let's, let's trust in him. Let's um, come into his kingdom. Let's walk in his kingdom. Let's uh, look to uh, our high priest, Jesus, who is in the order of Melchizedek and not look to the world uh, and the powers and principalities for answers because we won't we won't we won't we won't find them there we won't find them in the the sins that entrap us we won't find the answers in uh going to going to those places we'll only find them in jesus christ we'll only find them in jesus um that's a really uh, quite a short message today you know jesus was in the order of Melchizedek. Abraham took bread and wine with Melchizedek and um, gave a tenth of all he had. And he chose God. He chose to follow the most high God. You know, today, let's choose the most high God. And let's not choose the kingdoms and spiritual powers of this world and the dark forces. Let's choose God. If you uh, aren't, aren't a Christian or if you uh, feel far away from God today, let, let me pray a prayer and encourage you to pray it with me. Uh, maybe uh, maybe to become a, a Christian, maybe to become a follower of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray this prayer. Father God, I thank you that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for me. I thank you that he is uh, your son, uh, that he is uh, the exact image of you, and that if we've seen him, we've seen the Father. I thank you that because of him, I can have life and that my sins can be forgiven forever. So I repent of my sin, turn around from it, and say, so I want to follow you and come into your kingdom. Amen. Okay, back over to you, Dave.